right, who stock went up, who stock went down after UFC 305. Uh, I promise the up isn't just going to be fighters who won and the down isn't just going to be uh, fighters who lost. We'll, we'll, we'll give a little bit more nuance than that uh, for this particular one here today. Uh, but let's start with the up as uh, Drickus Duplessis obviously is one of the ones who stock rises immensely coming off of this particular occasion um i, I think he i mean I, I don't think i know he moved up in my pound for pound rankings he erases a lot of the questions of israel adesanya just kind of hanging over everything in this division um as kind of like the the great fighter who he hadn't stopped yet um but to, to come away with that victory is just so impressive and really, really intriguing now going forward to see what he can do. He locks in as the unquestioned number one in this division. And now there's talk of him moving up for a champ v champ mega fight with Pereira. So he obviously sees his uh, stock just sty uh, skyrocket going forward. Um, the, the other one that uh, another fighter who we see their stock kind of shoot up, and that is Kaikara France. He gets a big KO win against a former title challenger. It, it feels like he is either in line for his next bout um, being a championship bout or at least being a title eliminator or something along those lines. Um, a loss, and it kind of maybe felt like he was falling into a bit of a gatekeeper type of a role. So this was a huge, huge win for him um, to see his stock rise in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Uh, same thing with uh, Dan Hooker. He gets a win against a top five opponent. He showed some really really good stand-up in this fight and did a really good job of getting up against a very strong wrestler. And so now he gets back into those big fights, title type of conversations when it kind of felt like there was a chance that, <clears throat> excuse me, that he was going to, to start kind of falling back into... Um, falling back into that that gatekeeper type of a status. So a gigantic win for him. Um, but I think even in defeat, Matush Gamron sees his stock rise. I thought he won that fight. I thought his wrestling was great. His control was very good as well. He landed some damage, especially in that first round. And he showed some improved stand-up. And so you are really starting to see a bit of a well-rounded mixed martial artist come out in Gamron. And I, I think that is a very fascinating um development here that he's not just going to be a wrestler and just a ground and pound guy this is someone who at least is going to give you some problems on the feet as well and that is something that i, I think the ultimate fighting championship can really start to take advantage of here with this fighter going forward um and last one for the the fighters whose stock is on the way up uh that would be carlos pretas as he put on just a clinic on the feet showed fantastic work in the stand-up in beating a very solid fighter in Li Jing young um coming out of this one so i think his stock is certainly on the rise coming out of ufc 305 so not just who won and who lost but a, a little bit of um who is on the rise there for sure as far as the the down arrow it's pointing down slightly on israel adesanya um i thought he was winning this fight until uh he got caught but that is three losses in his last four and it does kind of feel like there needs to be a, a bit of a rehab go on with him before we get him into like major championship opportunity situations and stuff like that. Um, so that this does feel like a, a, a particular fighter who, again, I thought he showed up. I thought he looked great. I'm an Izzy fan always, but he now needs to get back on track. And so because of that, he is in the, the, the stock going down category. Uh, Steve Ersig as well. He gets popped and he has now lost the two biggest fights of his career now. And that is really disappointing for him. Um, he needs to get a major name on that resume to get going. Cause now the, the two best fighters that he has fought, he has lost to. And so it's starting to be like, okay, you can beat everyone else. Can you beat these high level fighters? Um, I, I thought Kaikara friends might've been that opportunity. It wasn't. And so um, he loses. And that's, that, that's difficult. I think for him to, to kind of take uh, even in victory. I think Jarzinho Rosenstruck re really sees his stock drop out of UFC 305. Um, he, he was actually rather convincing in uh, a win, but a decision win over a guy who had lost his last four by knockout or, or finish isn't all that impressive. It just didn't really seem like a real dominating performance. And it, it just didn't seem like, oh man, we need to see this guy again. It was like, all right, well, Rosenstruck had a fight and that was that. And so now let's see if he can build off of this. But I, I, I just, I have no... 
I have no interest in a, oh man, let's go out and see Rosenstruck now and, and see what he can do. I, I'm just, I'm not there with this fighter. And so off of that as well, it's Tai Tuivasa in there uh, for me. He has five losses in a row. Um, he looked really soundly outclassed on the feet in this fight uh, against the guy in the bottom part of the top 15. And so to, to me, it, it's just, it's so obvious that he needs quite a few rehab fights before we're getting him back into to anything of note in the ultimate fighting championship and the last one is Li Jing Liang. um he was soundly outclassed on the feet it's the first time he's ever lost by knockout first time back in a couple of years so i think he'll be fine but um that this one did not help his stock any that this one is really taking a dip